r slash ass credit posted by you slash tartar buildup. Serious, what was your biggest we need to leave? Now. Moment. A friend and I were exploring an abandoned hospital, and the way it was set out was via a bunch of joint buildings. All the windows and doors were boarded up aside from one place where we could squeeze in past a loose board, and the layout meant that once we were in through there, we had access to pretty much the entire main building. Obviously it was darker than dark in there, and we have to remember which wing we'd come in from. We had flashlights so it wasn't too bad, but then we got to this room where there was a lot of cool stuff left behind, beds, filing cabinets, etc., and we wanted to take pictures, so we turned the flashlights off so we could use the flash on the camera. We did this for 10 minutes or so, only seeing the room and the bright flash from the camera. Everything was cool. And then we both slowly became aware of noises. Usually an abandoned building is pretty quiet apart from water dripping and wind doing weird things, but we could hear floors creaking, doors creaking. The occasional scrape or crash of metal against floor. Basically it sounded like someone was blundering around in the dark. Now, the layout means that in order to get back to where we came in, we have to walk back towards the noise. There's only one route. We're getting freaked out so we start moving back through the rooms, stopping to listen all the while. Finally we get to the side hall that we came in from, and we bolt to the door at the end, finally risking turning the flashlights on and making noise. It's the wrong fucking door. We stand there, listening to the footsteps get closer. We're frozen, standing in the dark, totally cornered. If whoever or whatever is making that noise comes down this short hall, we're fucked. We wait and listen, holding our breaths. The scraping and shuffling approaches, slowly comes past, and then fades. We wait a bit, and then creep out of the hall and into the main building again. Carefully we move one hall over, where we can see a sliver of light from the loose board. We quietly make our way towards it. Then we hear an almighty scrape and bang behind us, as though someone tipped over one of the huge metal filing cabinets. I mean, it was loud. I yell time to go. And we sprint for the door, and there are clear footsteps right behind us. We launch ourselves through the loose board and down the overgrown path, before taking a quick look back. We can't see anything through the small gap, but we do not stick around to see if that changes. Edit, found some pictures from the visit. Nothing creepy shows up in the pictures themselves, but still good for a visual aid and also because abandoned buildings are cool. Probably two months after my wedding, I invited my then best friend, maid of honor, to a party my husband and I were going to. She agreed. Sometime into it, I'm drunk and in the pool and my husband swims out to me to tell me she just asked him to sleep with her. I have never sobered up or left somewhere so fast. I was 14. My slightly younger brother and I new to the area, were hanging out at a park near our house. Someone I knew from school but had never talked to showed up to the park hung out, talked with us and eventually invited us to come hang out at his house. We checked in with our parents who gave the okay and off we went. We are hanging out in the living room where his dad and little sister are watching TV. Shortly after his dad gets up to go to the bathroom. When he comes back out of the bathroom he's got his dick and balls out, scratching and stroking it as he walks back towards his recliner. My jaw hit the floor, my brother's jaw hit the floor, but our new acquaintance who had also looked over and saw what was happening, just kept carrying on the conversation as if this were perfectly normal. I immediately gave an excuse for us needing to go home and never went back. Met this cute girl at a party. Spent the whole night dancing a flirting. Offered to drive her home and she agreed. We were making out in the car in front of her house when another car pulls up with their headlights beaming at us. I ask if that's a neighbor and if we're blocking their driveway. She replies no, that's my husband. Husband's car door opens and I noped the fuck out of there. Dropped her straight back at the party and never saw her again. Her excuse was that they were separated and he shouldn't have a problem with it. I sure wasn't sticking around to find out. So I was waiting at the train station to pick up a friend of mine. I was early so I decided to stand in the sun right outside of the station. A guy with a bicycle walked up to me asking in broken English if I knew how late the train would arrive. 
After I answered the question he stayed around and started talking to me. Now I know that's not weird at all but the things he asked and the way he acted and looked just gave me a creepy vibe. Eventually he asked if I would walk with him while he dropped his bicycle off. I didn't want to because the place to store bicycles at this station is very secluded and to be honest I didn't want to be alone with this guy. So I noped out and walked into the station. He started yelling at me. Calling me names but at that moment the train came in and it got very busy. So he left. A few months later I read this article in the local paper about a girl being raped at the station. They had put a drawing of a guy next to the article as he was not yet caught. It was the same guy. To this day I'm very happy I didn't go with him. I've been traveling alone in Europe and it's ridiculous how often men approach me. I'm 100% sure they see me as an easy target, a woman alone and a tourist. I've gotten to the point that as soon as they get I saw you from over there and you're so beautiful that I just respond sorry, not interested. Literally happened yesterday in Paris. I'm not that attractive that I expect to be approached by random guys, I'm also not that insecure that I'll fall for their lame speeches either. In Belgium they were worse though. They kept trying to get me to go and get a drink with them. Like thanks but no thanks. I'll just stay in this nice and public place. I don't care that it's only 15 minutes, I'm not following you anywhere. I prefer to be paranoid than dead slash assaulted. When I was about 16, I went to visit my grandmother at her place. The smell of natural gas was intense, even though Nana didn't seem to notice it much. She was groggy, sort of half asleep, not her usual responsive self. So I made her get out of the house at once and opened the windows and doors. I called dad and he reported it to the gas company, who sent inspectors right away. They shut off the gas, valve in the street, immediately and sent a repair crew to fix a leaking joint in the gas supply pipe. The inspector said that if I hadn't acted then and there, the probability was great that there would soon have been an explosion. The owner of a Mexican restaurant threw two young farm workers at the bar out to the parking lot. They were drunk as monkeys and proceeded to try to fight but mostly just leaned on each other, all in front of the picture window while the place is full of people. Then one runs to his trucks and burns rubber out of there. I said time to go honey she says what? Those assholes aren't done and I'm not going to be here when the shooting starts we left, it did, not long after. My friend and I, both females, met up our first time back home from college. It was a surprisingly nice day outside in the middle of winter so we decided to get lunch and eat outside. We found a park that had no one there and were sitting at a picnic table catching up when I see a scruffy looking guy in a large work van with no rear windows pull into the parking lot. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to him at first but I noticed he was moving around the outside of the van for a bit and he kept looking our way. He finally walked down the sidewalk toward us and passed by our picnic table and walked around the back side of the restroom building to look down the hill on the other side of it. Very obviously casing out the place. He walked back to his van and me and my friend were discussing what we were going to do while I watched him open up the back of the van and start digging around it. He made a call on his cell phone and a few minutes later another male pulled up in a different car. He got out and started talking to the first guy, who not very discreetly pointed our direction. They immediately started walking toward us and my friend and I scooped what was left of lunch and fast walked out of the place while keeping an eye on them. One of the times in my life I could literally feel the hair on the back of my neck standing on end. It could have been nothing, but even now I feel pretty certain that they had something planned and I am glad we left. It was my dad's moment not mine. When I was a kid my dad dropped me and my brothers off at my grandma's for an afternoon. She had to go to the store and we didn't want to go, so she left us with the woman downstairs. We liked her, she had a couple of kids around our age and we all go to play Nintendo. We were happy. My dad came to pick us up before my grandma was home and freaked out. He found us, almost immediately, like he literally saw us through the window as he walked up to the place. Cause he knocked on her door, told her we had to go, thanked her. Then walked us up the stairs to my grandma's apartment and went in to collect our stuff. That was all calm. But my grandma came home at that time and as soon as she came in my dad lost it on her. 
I told you never to leave my kids alone with that woman. My grandma argued it was no big deal and my dad just screamed at her and I don't remember what or why but saying never and even that he didn't want that woman hanging out with her ever if me and my brothers were there. He seemed genuinely scared. I don't know what tipped him off but that woman was bad news. Not a long time after, that woman killed her two kids brutally and tried to kill herself. It was like my dad knew that was going to happen. Late afternoon in the summer. I'm waiting in the bus station near my house, most businesses are closed, not a lot of cars in the street. Guy passes in front of me, he passes again two minutes later watching me suspiciously, alarms start to go in my head screaming to me that I need to leave and get the fuck off here, but I ignore it since the bus will come in 10 minutes. Third time he passes he charges to me, pushing me to the wall with his cock out. I freeze for some seconds then start punching and kicking him. I managed to get away and the rest is history. Yeah, trust your guts, guys. I used to bartend in my local bigger city, yet still small. Widely known for being a city you can leave stuff out in the park like chairs and blankets and no one will have touched them. Well many years ago the city was known for servers and bartenders getting jumped on their way home from shift, due to us carrying cash, and not having ample parking in the city. No one is paying $30 a day to park when you work, so you frequently had to walk over a mile to your car. I ended up getting followed to my car one night, it's around midnight, the streets are usually completely empty aside from the occasional drinker standing outside having their smoke, and I'm F, 5 apostrophe 3 110 pounds soaking wet with a towel on my head, so virtually defenseless. Every time I walked faster, he did cross the street when I did, etc. when I just happened to come across a couple walking and I sped walked until they were in earshot and I whisper yelled I think I'm being followed help me and without missing a beat they changed their pace so I was immediately with them walking, and they both put arms around me and made sure not only I got to my car, but was in my car and waited for me to drive out of sight of them to make sure I still wasn't being followed since he ended up going in the same parking lot as I was parked. I will never forget them as long as I live. It was early 2019 and I was with my girlfriend at the time walking through the woods near my house as we often did. We were having an intense argument over something stupid when I noticed something through the trees off the trail to where we were walking. It was a man wearing a dark top and blue jeans. People came in this woods all the time but what was weird is this man wasn't on any trails he was in the middle of the overgrowth. I told her to shut up. I know bad idea especially in an argument, and she just got madder at me. I told her again and told her to look in the direction I was looking. At first she didn't see what I was talking about so I told her to look for blue since the man's jeans stood out the most, then she saw him. A man walking through the overgrowth following us. I didn't know who this guy was but he looked older, still I wasn't taking any chances especially with my girlfriend there so I told her let's go we have to leave and we walked faster. The trouble was we were in the middle of nowhere and far from any exits and to be honest my girlfriend at the time wasn't exactly physically fit so walking fast was hard for her. We walked as fast as she could and I kept looking behind us and that old man was still following us in the overgrowth obviously trying to remain hidden. We ended up leaving the woods and never going back there together. I've been back there many times since alone and have had a few strange encounters with another person that looks kinda like the old man but I can't say for sure it's the same guy as he is always watching from afar. He never does anything besides follow from a distance but I've seen him a total of three times, spooky. We were playing hoops in a bad neighborhood. At some point one of the guys we were playing with got real nasty with a boys leave now. We ain't fucking with you you need to leave. Real aggressive etc. I had noticed a black BMW circling around the playground but nothing much else. All his friends started insulting us and pushing us etc. Which was weird we were playing with them every weekend. I had given free tutoring classes to one of their brothers. We left. Pissed. That was a damn good playground. And it felt special to play with the thugs, us being with a nerdy boys. Well 15 minutes after we left the black BMW shot at them. Multiple casualties etc. I've told this story before. TL, doctor at the bottom.
I used to really enjoy driving around at night, especially because round where I live there are a lot of country roads and they were fun to zip around. One evening, after I'd been at a friend's house, I decided to drive to my church, about half an hour away from home, and back just listening to music. The route is one I've done most Sundays for 17 years being driven, and driving it for about 4 years at that point, so even in the dark I felt fine to go 60 miles per hour, speed limit. I got maybe a quarter of the way there, and my stomach started really twisting. I knew that if I kept going I'd regret it. But I shook it off, it wasn't that late, and the weather was fine, I wasn't going to miss this driving opportunity. But as I got further the feeling in my stomach got so much worse and I realized I had to turn around. Just before I reached the hill pass that's about halfway to the church I pulled a U-turn and went home, and stopped feeling so anxious and forgot about it. Next day, woke up and got in my car to go to church, to find my usual route had been closed. Turned out that on the hill pass, the road had crumbled away leaving a sheer drop that would have been around a blind bend for me. The road issue had been called in by a driver going the opposite direction to me about 5 minutes after I'd pulled a UA and driven away. I'd definitely have been, at the very least, badly hurt had I kept going. TL, doctor, racing around country roads at night would have got me killed had my stomach not warned me.